Brian Hopkins is a musician who played at the concert last night. He was backstage before the shooting. Then he went out to enjoy the fans out in front. The shots began. He ran back and hid in a freezer with several fans, probably why he survived. Brian Hopkins joins us tonight. Brian, where were you when the shots rang out? I was actually uh, out front. I had just walked back from backstage, and um, I actually didn't play this event. I had played the first year, and I had come to support friends. So I said my hellos and then walked out the front, and my best friend and I, my guitar player, we were staring at the stage, literally almost in front of it, and I had a couple of friends standing in front of me. And when the shots, when we figured out what it was, a guy went down right in front of us, another guy about four feet in front of him, next to him, and I turned to see what's going on, and two girls go down right behind us. And Ben grabs me and says, run. And you could see people running at us. And I grab the two girls in front of me, and we start running. And instead of sprinting, I didn't run towards the, the crowd the way they were going. I had just left backstage, and I separated from Ben because he went after one of our friend's wives. And he fell and almost got trampled. He got up, and he said, I'm running, and he took off. I lost him. And I ran through the backstage area. And that's when all you hear is bang, 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 bang. It's just coming. And you can hear it coming off the rooftop, off the stage above. And it started running. And I had them, and people were following me. And it stopped about four seconds. And then it started up again. And we run into a fence, a big fence. And I could have hopped that fence. I could have easily been over it. but. There was no way. There were screaming people. There were people afraid they can't get over. And so there was a freezer. Well, I didn't know it was a freezer, but it was a big trailer. And the door was propped open, and I could see somebody in there. And we just started throwing people inside this refrigerator. And once everybody got in, I jumped in with them. And I jumped in the middle, and I started comforting the two girls that I was helping. They started comforting. They were 24-year-old, 23-year-old comforting people older than them freaking out screaming and and I went I meant to try and make a video for my parents and this guy started screaming and pounding on the wall and we I just stopped what I was doing and had him sit down in front of me and take care of his wife or girlfriend or whatever and then I went to the door to see if we could get out. And as soon as I opened a little bit, it just bang, 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 bang. I shut the door and I looked at a friend of mine who, who was in there in the, it, just a little bit of ways away from me. And I said, everything's gonna be okay. And he looked at me and said, no, it's not. And we're just like, okay, this is not where it's gonna end, not here. So we waited until there was silence. We were all cold and we, we went to open up the door. We popped it open, he and I. One guy jumps on the thing, jumps over the fence, because somebody had put a ramp. And then the next guy jumped, and I asked him to stay. Can you help the ladies? Can you help people jump? It's a tall fence. I can get them over. So we started getting them over the fence, and they were just climbing, just attacking the fence. And then it came down to the two that were, they didn't leave me. The two, I don't know, I didn't know, I barely knew them. And they're just, they stayed with me. And I was trying to help them. I couldn't, so I grabbed them. And I remember starting to, we're going to find somewhere else to go. And there's a police officer running at me, sweaty face, screaming, and he said, this way, this way. And as soon as we got past him, that guy took off to where all the bad was. And he took off that direction as he's sending us off to safety. And I don't know if there was anyone behind me. But I just grabbed the girl's hands and we were running and there's a body and another oh. body and another body. And then there was another body in the body. The guy had got shot in the stomach and his friends, they were over him, like trying to keep him alive. And there's no way he was still alive. And then that's when the girls with me started to panic and wanted to 
call their parents and they're I mean, just run, run, run. And we, we're crossing the street. And in the middle of the street, like this, there's a car with people hiding behind it. And the guy in the passenger seat is shot. And I, I couldn't stop. I'm trying to help people. And now I've got other people following me. And I just said, run to the dark, which is this right here, right behind us. That right there, that alley right there. And so we were running to this area because it was dark, but you could still see Mandalay Bay. We're not out of harm's way, and we're still yep. just running. We don't know, by the way, when we're in that icebox, we had no idea if there are people running around shooting, we're hiding and trying to be quiet. Well, of course. I so mean, it sounds we like through, the we, weirdest dream sequence ever and a horrifying one. It's, and here's the thing, and I said this to, I just called one of the girls, Nicole, and I said, thank you for being so, she didn't act her age. She didn't freak out. They didn't freak out until they saw that. But it yeah. was so methodical to, we just, I well, just, sounds, let's go I calmly, mean, let's calmly. Brian, thank you for telling us your story. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Taking a second for me to digest it, I can't imagine how you feel right now. Thank you. It's, you're welcome, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for everybody. No. Who had well, to go through it.